Why does God speak to us today? That's the subject we're on, and we're on it for three days, because it's so vital. Why does God speak to us? He's speaking his truth, and by my spirit I can begin to understand that truth. What's he saying to us? Now, we're on a very special subject about listening to God. And I've said, and I say again this morning, I was never taught to listen to God. Maybe you were, but I grew up in a church, I grew up in a Christian home, and no one ever sat down to teach me to listen to God. And I regret it, because I suddenly see a whole new world spiritually opening up once I begin to listen to God. Now, there are many voices speaking in our generation, and the number of voices is increasing. And unless we can discern the voice of God, we are going to listen to false teaching. We're going to listen to false voices. And let me tell you, over the radio, over the television, there are false teachers today. Some of the things you hear are not truth. How can you tell? Well, only as you're trained in the Spirit to listen to God. If you're not a Christian, you won't know either way, so carry on listening. But if you're a Christian believer, your spirit is alive unto God, you should be able to discern the voice of God. Now, today I want us to look at the fact that we are to be conformed into the image of Christ by the truth of God. If you have a Bible, turn with me to Romans 8 and verse 29. Romans 8, 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son. Now the problem with this verse is, we usually get so stuck on the foreknowledge of God and predestination, we never get to the next part that's so fantastic. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of God. We listen to the truth so that we can be fashioned into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Isn't that incredible? The Lord our God wants each one of us to be like Jesus Christ. How are you doing? Are you becoming like Jesus? Is the truth of God becoming so real in you that there's a likeness of Jesus Christ? I believe as the Holy Spirit produces his fruit in your life and produces his fruit in my life, we become like Jesus. We become conformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. As you and I listen to his truth, whether it's on the radio or television, whether we're reading his word or the words being read, whether we're in church or somewhere else, and there's someone speaking or there's someone praying or we're singing a chorus or a hymn, we can hear the voice of God if our spirit is tuned. The snag is, some of our spirits aren't tuned. So let's look at this being conformed into his image by the truth. First of all, let me go back to what we shared yesterday. There are two types of hearers to God's message. And we said there are passive listeners and aggressive listeners. But let's take it a step further. In James chapter 1 and verse 22, we read this. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. Now, group number one. Group number one are passive listeners. They're hearers only. They hear the word of God, but they never put it into practice. That's a real problem and a burden. Supposing you had a letter when you got home from God. While you've been out to work today, an angel dropped by your house, and it's addressed to you. Dear John, signed God. Now, if you were told by your wife that an angel called in at 10 o'clock and left a letter from God, would you read that letter? Would you open it? Or would you say, well, look, dear, I'll look at it after supper. I can't just bother now. Of course you wouldn't you would open that letter, and friend, you would open it carefully, because you didn't want to miss one word of what God has said to you. And when you'd read it, and when you'd absorbed it, and when you'd thought about it, you'd say, dear, have we got a frame? I want to put this up on the wall so that I never forget it. This is a message from God. Do you see what I'm saying to you? We have a Bible. 
which is God's word to us, God's message to us, and we don't even read it. We have God within us by his Holy Spirit. God dwells in you and me. God by his Spirit is continually seeking to get messages through to us. And we're not even listening. What's wrong with us? We are hardly hearers of the word, let alone doers. We are passive listeners. That's not what God wants. Then there's the other group, the aggressive listeners. Be ye not only hearers of the word, doers of the word. When God speaks, we listen. When God speaks, we absorb. When God speaks, we bask in it. And we are not going to move until God has stopped speaking. While he's speaking, I'm listening. And if it's the end of the service, I'm not going to move from my pew. If the whole congregation thinks I'm sick, I'm going to sit there because God is speaking. And who cares what anyone thinks if God is speaking to me? And by the way, I think God is speaking to all of us all the time. I think the snag is only a few of us have the transmitters open and hear what God's saying. Aggressive listeners picking up what God says. But secondly, what God intends us to hear. He never intends us just to receive information. You know, sometimes you'll meet a Christian who has really a tremendous Bible knowledge in that they know verses, they know references, they can turn here and they can turn there. But friend, if what the Bible says is not part of their life, they're only hearers of the word. You see, it's not just hearing the word of God, it's making it your own, coming into your lifestyle, becoming part of you. That's the key. Do you understand that? Don't sit around gloating over knowledge. God didn't give you information. Oh yes, I know this reference, I can find that. Somebody says something, I can say where it is. Fine. Now what's it done in your life? Nothing. Nothing. Then there's something desperately wrong. Secondly, God intends us to hear. He never speaks to entertain us. He always speaks to our need. Do you understand that? You've never heard God say, by the way, I'd love to tell you a joke. Now, I didn't say that preachers shouldn't tell jokes. I think there can be a tremendous point in humor. And we know God laughs. He can never stand us if he didn't. But he doesn't give us his message just to keep us entertained. So we come home tonight and say to our wives, by the way, do you know what God told me today? Do you know what I heard from God today? Do you know what he's saying to me about our daughter? And we've had a message from God. That wasn't entertaining. That was a need. And God spoke to it. Thirdly, there's a warning from Jesus about hearing that we should all know. Do you remember? He told us a little parable, and it's recorded at the sermon, end of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24. Let me read to you. This is very simple, but very profound. He said, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, that's a doer of the word, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Can I make a terrible suggestion? Are you playing the fool? You say, Richard, what do you mean? Are you playing the fool? You're hearing the word of God day after day, but you are never, ever putting that into practice. What's wrong with us? What's the matter with us? Jesus says you're a fool. Jesus says you're building your house on sand. Hear the word and make it part of your life. Listen to God and what he says do. And if you don't, you are being a fool. And the problem is, as this world comes to the end of the age, and I believe it's coming to that at this moment, as this world begins to wind down, if you and I cannot discern the voice of God, and all these other voices are coming, we're not going to know who to listen to. And if we don't listen to the word of God, 
I don't think we'll stand for Jesus Christ. I am becoming more and more convinced it's the person who knows the Word of God, who practices the Word of God, who's going to be going through to the end of this age absolutely glorious in Jesus Christ. And for the rest, I think they've played the fool. And the house is going to collapse because there are storms coming and the winds are going to blow and that individual is going to disappear from the numbers who are with Jesus Christ. Now, there's one other thing. We are to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ by the truth of God. And do you know what some of us do? We listen to men and not to God. And this may be you. You listen to TV preachers, but you're not listening to God. You're listening to your favorite TV preacher. And I'm not saying that man saying anything right or wrong. I said you're listening to the preacher and not to God. Now, he may well be giving the message of God. Don't listen to man. Listen for God. By your spirit, which is alive in the Holy Spirit, listen to God who is spirit and speaking through that man. And if you're only hearing the message of a man, you're not hearing very much. I'm not hearing very much. I've got to hear what God says. Now, I often quote Charles Stanley. Why? Because suddenly I found a man who speaks the word of God to me so clearly that my spirit can be fed by him. Not by Charles Stanley, but by what he says from God. I hear God through that man. If you're going to a church where you never hear God speak to you through that preacher, I believe it's time you found another preacher. And you may have to travel a little way. But you need to hear from God. Men have little or nothing to say. We know this through many of our politicians. They can talk for 15 minutes and you analyze it, they never said a thing. But what is God saying who is spirit? What is God saying who is spirit to your spirit? Are you receiving the message? Because he's speaking truth. And by that truth, he wants to conform you into the image, into the shape of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he saved you. Are you being conformed? Are you receiving that truth? Or are you just hearing? If so, friend, maybe you're a fool.